Hi everybody, welcome to another YouTube video. Today we're in Cambridge and we're going to cover this huge domestic solar PV system. 60 panels, 17 kilowatt solar edge inverter. Let's take a look. Okay, let's start with the panels. We've got 60 Trina 390 watt all black panels, all surrounded with the black solar skirt to make them sink into this slate roof perfectly. You can see them there and probably some of the drone footage. They look absolutely fantastic on this very dark gray slate. Really happy with how they look. There's a total of 23.4 kilowatt peak of installed capacity on those panels. They are spread over around nine roofs, so you're never going to hit that 23 kilowatt peak. So Solar Edge is kind of one of the only systems that would allow us to mix that many different roofs into one system because it can optimize which roofs are in the sun at what time of day. If you're doing this on a standard uh, solar PV system, then you may need multiple inverters for different spreads of roofs. So that's just one other benefit of Solar Edge. But you can see here, we've got four on this little roof just here, and then we've got around 14 on the main roof that we're looking at here. We've also got some on this little flat roof. Yeah, we've literally filled every single square inch that we can on this roof because this place needs some serious power. We'll go into that in a little bit more detail when we get uh, down to the inverter. So this job came across our desk through Instagram. So we're working in partnership with a company called the Daniels Group who do really high-end renovations and repair works around Cambridge. So if you don't follow them, um, head over to Instagram and follow them, the Daniels Group. So yeah, thanks very much to them for getting us involved in a unique and probably one of our most challenging um, cabling and installation jobs for getting the cabling back from these panels, work with multiple contractors uh, to make sure we're not holding anyone up. So this job, you can't see it from where we stood now, but behind this roof here, there's, there's two other roofs that kind of form a V with a, a box gutter in, in the middle. All of that was leaking. So the Daniels Group and ourselves, uh, the Daniels Group sort of orchestrated it all, but uh, we worked with the roofing contractor to uh, re-roof that, that job. So that was all taken care of. We then came in when it was felted and battened and put our roof hooks in. And then once the roof hooks were in, the roofers then put the flashings in and slated the full roof. Uh, Redid all the box go, it looks fantastic up there. The rest of the roof was all checked to make sure there's nothing else leaking in. And then we installed all of our panels. So yeah, it's a really unique and really interesting uh, project this one. So one that we'll be remembering for a very long time. But enough of being stood out in the cold, let's head down to where the inverter is and show you a little bit as to why this system needed to be installed because this, this client's got some really cool technology in here. Let's go. So let's head down to what is the plant room area. This is where we've got our solar PV inverter installed and this is where all of our connection is and this is where all the DC comes back to. I'm going to explain what's going on, why we've got these dangling out in a minute, but uh, this is where all of our equipment's going. In the future, this customer, we've actually got it on order at the minute, we're having a battery system here as well, uh, but that's just, uh, we're just waiting for deliveries. Like a lot of people in the <laughs> renewable industry, there, there are stock delays, unfortunately. So the battery going there, we've installed this new distribution board um, just just here uh, and that's going to ha house all of our renewables equipment but I'm going to go through all this in a little bit more detail shortly but let's go in here and show you why all of this is uh, is required so in this plant room this is where we've got all of our connection from so you can see we've got three eddies here as well which I'll go through a little bit more in detail uh, further on in the video but this is where we've got our connection from and that goes through the back of galve trunking here and into our uh, consumer unit outside our distribution board but that's not what I wanted to show you in here. I wanted to show you all this stuff that I don't understand what it does. <laughs> it's all plumbing. So this customer's got a big swimming pool, steam room, jacuzzi, all that sort of stuff. And I believe there was an issue with the amount of water that was required. So he had to put something in to basically drag his own water up and um, de-ionize it or something like that. I don't 100% know, as you could probably tell, but 
it's just really cool in here. Um, and this is where most of the energy is used in the home, running all the pumps, all the heaters, you know, all this, all this stuff. <laughs> and I think it's about 100 kilowatt hours a day if everything's running at full, full whack. So it's three phases, this property. So that's obviously spread across the three phases, but it's a hell of a lot of power. And obviously, as energy prices have gone up, the more that you're using, the more it's costing. So for this customer, putting solar on was a no-brainer. And that's why we filled every square millimetre we can on this, this property, because they just need the power. There's so much energy when all this is up and running. Currently, there's a bit of a leak on the system, so it's, it's not running at the minute, but it's very impressive. Okay, so behind me, if you've seen some of our other stuff, you'll recognize some of this kit. We've got a storage inverter here, got our DC surge protection, and we're gonna go through all the other bits in a minute. But what you will find strange is that all these cables are dangling out. Usually in the videos, it's all finished and uh, you know it's all prim and proper. On this job, what we had was we had some serious delays on getting a 17 kilowatt inverter. So what we did was we fitted a 10 kilowatt three phase temporarily, and then we've actually brought this 17 kilowatt with us today. So I've, uh, I've been cracking on getting that change. So I thought I'll uh, we'll take you through a bit of that process and, and show you show you was connecting all that back up and back in. So we've got our AC connection here, which is gonna go back into that inverter there. That'll supply that. All the cabling's been set up so that it's ready just to connect 17 kilowatt back in. We've got our DC cables here coming out the surge protection. So we just need a couple of little cable ties on that to keep them neat. We've then got on the DC side, our DC surge protection. And I swear to God, I have not placed this, but within this, surge protection box we've got what looks to be six but it's actually three per string and we've got one of them that's actually operated it's the first time i've ever seen one operate we've been installing these for a little while but not very long um, and it's the first time i've ever seen one actually activate i'll let you have a little look, close look at this but we've got uh, one of these here that's the cartridge needs to be changed out so i'll probably open this up later on and take it out and show you what it's all about in there but um but yeah that's quite interesting first time i've seen one of those operate they're 1,000 volts. They're rated for the voltage that we've got coming down from the, the solar, which is sort of around the 600 volt-ish. They're uh, acceptable for that. We've then got two DC isolators just next to that surge protection there. And the way that we've wired this is we've actually wired it to come into those DC isolators first so that we can, when we isolate those DC isolators, it actually kills the supply to the surge protection devices so that we can actually uh, change them safely. With it being solar edge, we're only getting one volt per panel, but just seemed like a good thing to do. So we've installed all of that, and that'll obviously disconnect the DC from the inverter in the event of uh, us needing to change the inverter, which we are doing today. We've then got our AC isolator, so a 32 amp AC isolator here. That comes in, and obviously through this six mil uh, high to five core cable here. We've then fitted our generation meter right up in the back there, and that is just logging everything that the system is generating. Um, just and it's more for MCS than anything else nowadays. But that used to be what uh, people had to register for the feeding tariff and get paid for the generation in those good old days. <laughs> so that all comes around. Um, we've left a big space here and here for what's gonna be the battery area. There's actually room on the other side of that wall as well. So we might have to be a bit inventive as to how we, how we install that. Just cause we, we have got a door here that we don't wanna block. Yeah, that's a video for another day. We've then got our Hager DB. So part of the job today is finishing all the labeling. So we've got the labeling to do here. And I've also brought with me a DIN rail top box. So in that DIN rail top box will be the Modbus meter for the solar PV. So we've got a Modbus on this so the customer could check up how much they're consuming, how much they're importing, how much they're exporting. Um, that currently is just temporarily fixed inside here. Uh, so that then can be moved into this DIN rail box here. And that'll also be where our battery meters go. So for the battery system that we're gonna install, which currently the Alpha um, T10 HV, that's gonna go in here as well. And the battery meters will go in there. Uh, up on there but we've got plenty of ways in here for the uh, battery circuits so that'll all go there we've then got the ac surge protection here which hasn't operated which is good so yeah that's all sat there ready so we've got ac and dc surge protection on this so that is going to be that uh, metal door because it's domestic and i've been caught out with that before as well so make sure you if you're buying these make sure you buy them with the metal doors because if you buy them separately they have your eyes out so just a little tip there uh, but yep the galve trunking all the way around just to uh, keep it all neat and then we'll probably come down with a stab of um a galve conduit when we get to that that point but that like i say is a, a video for another day so 
that is what uh, what we've got out here. I'm going to crack on and get this inverter wired now. So I've got all this connected back up. I've got the AC in, got the DC in, um, got my uh, Modbus connection in here as well, which goes back to our Modbus to monitor import export, all that lovely stuff. We've got our temporary Wi-Fi connection as well. So uh, further on down the line, we're going to get this system hardwired in. So I've just got to screw this to the to the board. But what I'm doing now is I'm actually connecting my phone to the inverter via Solar Edge's app called Setup. Um, and what I'm doing there is, because these systems haven't got any screens or anything, it's the only way we can actually uh, log into the inverter and do all the settings, uh, update the firmware and everything else. So what I'm doing at the minute is I'm downloading the latest firmware onto my phone, and then as soon as that's finished, which can take a little bit of time, that'll then upload onto the inverter. Once that's uploaded and this is all happy and ready to go, we can set up the grid code to make sure it's got all the right um, grid regulations for the UK. We can get it connected online uh, via the Wi-Fi. We can set the, if we had any bot limits, we can add the Modbus device. We can basically do everything from, from our phone which is quite nice so at the minute it said installing firmware it's going to take 11 minutes so we've got 11 minutes to go and have a cup of tea whilst whilst that's finishing so i think whilst we're doing that because we don't have the luxury of tea and coffee here we'll do a bit of labeling and run through that so i'm going to print a load of labels out now and get all these isolators labeled the generation meter uh, the board everything um what we've tried to do as a company now, we've moved away from the label packs you can buy. You get some solar label packs just because you end up with sheets of, of labels that you never use or you hardly use any of. You end up keeping them because you're a tight Yorkshireman and they just end up clogging your van up. So what I've actually tried to do now is move everything over to the Brother printer and just buy different tapes. So we've got um, a white 24 mil in here, which we can use for the generation meter. And I've got a, a yellow 24 mil there, but we've got the, the nines, the 18s, we've got basically the full range just so that we can label it up using the Brother printer. Well, the good thing and I like it is you can connect via Wi-Fi to the, between your phone and the printer and you can design it all on your phone. They also have a lot of presets for solar as well, as well as EV charging, surge protection, standard and consumer units and things. So yeah, it's pretty cool. So if I press print there now, go on to my label that I want, press the side of the tape, press print. There we go, it's kicking in. So it actually even cuts the, the label as well. So you, you always have it exact same size. So yeah, solar generation meter. So I'm gonna get to get that one stuck on the, the generation meter and then print the rest off for the isolators. So now we've got all these labels printed, I'm going to start sticking them all over the isolate. So this one here is our DC isolate one. So we're going to stick that on top of this isolate just here. Try and get it in the middle. Not bad. Not bad. So I've got another one to go on here. Another one to go on the AC, the surge. Basically we're going to stick the full thing. That's all part of MCS. So I'm going to get cracked on with that now and get all this in a sea of yellow labels. Okay, so I mentioned earlier on about this surge protection device uh, and we've got one that has operated. So I'm gonna open this up and I'll give you a little, uh, give you a little rundown of what we've got in here. So I'll open this up now, left-handed. There we go. So this is our DC surge protection. So what we've got in here is we've got our incoming DC strings. It goes through into our D DC isolators um, so that we can isolate it Then comes back out. So we've got first string, string one, that's going into these DIN rail connectors here. So these are rated at 800 volts DC. Uh, it then jumps across. We've got a positive in, and then positive out to the inverter. And then we've got a jumper fly lead that comes into our surge protection here. And then we've got the same again on the negative side and same again on the other string. And then we've got, we've put a 10 mil um, earth back to the main DB, a main earthing point to, uh, to earth those. So you can see on these other five that it's all green at the minute. Uh, this one here is red. There we go. So that means that this ca this cartridge now needs to be changed. So all we'll do, we'll let the customer know that they've had a surge protection device operate, and then we can uh, we can arrange to get this uh, get this replaced. But these are one of the things where this could go like it has now fairly recently on the install, or it might 
never go in the full life of the system but uh, at least you know that this has probably protected that 10 kilowatt inverter uh, that was installed before which is really good because that was a temporary inverter <laughs> so i'm happy that we didn't have to come and change that inverter because it had been uh, damaged by a, by a surge so yeah it's the first time i've seen that but um, that's really promising that we can we know that it's operated so I've come down to where our three eddies are so we've got you'll have seen you've seen the plant room <laughs> that we've got so we've got plenty of areas that we can send some excess power so we've got three eddies one per phase so we've got l1 l2 l3 each one of these just looks after its own phase so it'll look at if the property is importing or exporting on that phase and then it will send any surplus on its phase directly into the tank that is what we're doing so this one here has got one immersion connected to it on one of the hot water cylinders for the property this one has got a second hot water cylinder uh, that the property's got this one here the customer's actually installed a inline pump heater or inline pool heater should i say so i believe that's three kilowatts and that'll sit in the floor of the pool just to keep that topped up and ease the strain on the heating system for it uh, but that's not uh, that's not all sorted yet so this one will remain off for now these two here are now online and connected and they're looking after their phase. So on the screens, a bit like if you've seen the Imagine kit before, we've got the house in the middle, we've got the solar on the top left and the grid on the top right. And it's just monitoring what's happening. So as soon as there is some surplus power that the home isn't using, that will switch on uh, heater number one and put that into the immersion heater, topping up that tank. If the customer then puts a high load on and there's not that surplus like there isn't now, then the system will just sit there waiting for that. If the hot water has to be heated by electricity say it was just an all electric property then you can set a timer either directly on the on the eddy or directly in the app to bring that heater on and it operate basically just like a big timer so you don't have to sacrifice that or try and tee in another timer it'll do it all in one the reason that we've done this is we are going to be fitting a battery but we're, again we're waiting for the batteries to come into stock so this is kind of a bit of a somewhere to send some surplus power weather's been pretty bad recently so it's they've not been uh, that active but from now on at least these will be there ready to send that power into the tank and it'll work with the battery as well so if the battery's fully charged or there's just a little bit of, of power going back to the grid then these can kick in and put that energy into the tank we've commissioned all these up now they're all updated and then we'll do this one next time okay so we've come up onto the sun terrace and it really is a sun terrace this is south facing so we've got some panels just down here on the flat like a van der Valk flat roofing kit uh, there's a bit of shading from this tree just up here but it's solar edge so whatever the shading is it'll try and make it as efficient as possible if we look this way we can see we've got four panels on this face here we've got two more on this flat roof just here and then we've got a whole bank of them on this south facing roof just here so we've got panels absolutely everywhere on this job it's an absolute beast like i said i think it'll probably be one of our most complicated installs We've got to tie all this in with the wiring and everything and just not possible without solar edge really uh, not without a mass of different inverters so yeah really interesting one but i thought this was quite a good representation of uh, of where all the panels are because yeah they are absolutely everywhere i'm glad they're up on the roof now and we don't have to carry them anymore but uh, but yeah really cool so let's go through what we've installed, how long it's taken, and what the cost is of having the, all of this equipment. So this is what we've installed. This is how much it's cost. And this is how long it's taken us to install it. So hopefully that gives you a bit of a guidance as to if you're looking at something like this as on this scale, likely cost would be. One thing to mention uh, within there is that we're working alongside the Daniels group and the roofing team. So costs are gonna be a little bit different if you wanting us to do absolutely everything, but, uh, but it gives you a good guide anyway. Hopefully that helps. Okay, so another YouTube video all wrapped up. Hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please like, subscribe and all that jazz. It's been a tough one as this, to be honest. It's been a real tough one and a real test of what we can do, but I'm really happy with how it's all turned out. And I know the customer is as well. We'll be back soon to do a battery on this one. But for now, I'm off in for me tea. We'll see you later. Hope you like my new house. <laughs>